Well, yeah, that. here we are. Um, we're yeah. on chapter 16, page 452, and this chapter deals with the evolution of primates. Now, the like first Sophie. section, 16.1... Talks about okay, my turn. We're missing something. Guys, dude, look at this monkey. Should be on page four fifty-two. So the evolution of primates um, starts with the simplest primates that uh, basically were. Uh, this, the mammal evolution really took off when the dinosaurs went extinct. So all the mammals that were around when dinosaurs were living were very small, kind of about the size of mice, and hiding from the dinosaurs, and they were mostly nocturnal, they'd come out at night. And the oldest primates are like that. They look like this tarsier. The tarsier is a, a, a little, it's called a prosimian. They can fit in the palm of your hand. And it's nocturnal, it only comes out at night. And so it's these little mice-like creatures that after the dinosaurs went extinct, they took to the trees um, and uh, it started getting larger. And all primates share a certain number of characteristics. And I'm going to skip forward and talk about those characteristics now. And then I'll go back to the types of primates. All primates have opposable thumbs. And what opposable thumbs are, are adaptations for hanging on tree limbs. Human. You can grab a tree limb if you have an opposable thumb. An opposable thumb is a thumb that touches the rest of your fingers. Most animals, other than primates, don't have that. A dog cannot take its end digit and touch it to the other four digits. I can Horse cut doesn't do that either. They don't even have horns. So, most primates have both opposable thumbs and big toes. Humans don't have the big toes, but we still have the thumbs on our, on our hands. Yes, and people that can't do that? No, everybody can do that pretty much. Unless you had some kind of accident. So, you can see all the different hands of monkeys and tarsiers and shrews and humans. We all have similar um, digits like that, the opposable thumb. Another thing all primates have is eyes forward. And eyes forward gives you good depth perception. Depth perception is the ability to figure out, to compute how far an object is away. And the only way to do that is by having both eyes looking at the object at the same time. Hold your finger out in front of your face and hold it real close. And close your right eye, and then close your left eye, and do like this, and you'll see the the finger shifts back and forth as you do this. Left and right. I do that all the time. Do it really fast. Now listen. Listen, please. My turn. The reason why it shifts location. The reason why it shifts locations is because you have two different pictures going to your brain. There's a picture coming from your left eye and a picture coming from your right eye, and those pictures are different. And the brain can sense this. And if the pictures are really different, the brain knows the object is close. Now do the same thing, shift your focus back and forth on my finger way up here. Notice it doesn't shift nearly as far. It barely shifts at all. Your brain is getting almost the same picture from both eyes for this finger. That means the finger's far away. If the brain gets two pictures that are very different, the object is close. If the brain gets two pictures that are almost the same, the object is far. That's depth perception, and you've got to have that if you're swinging around trees. So all primates have their eyes forward. We call it the binocular field of vision is where both uh, eyes can view the same thing. And uh, all primates have this. 
Some other things primates have is uh, flexible shoulder joints. You don't see other mammals able to do this. You've never seen a horse do this, have you? Horses don't do this because they don't have the flexible shoulder joints. We also have flexible hip joints to an extent. And some, some primates can do this with their legs, just like this. Orangutans can do it. Yeah, I'm going to show you some things swinging around in just a minute. Another thing all primates have is really big brains compared to their body size. Now, our brains, our human brains compared to their body size are even way bigger than the rest of the primates. But even the primates, like a monkey, just a little monkey, you say, well, the monkey's got a little brain because it's little. Yeah, but compared to the size of the rest of its body, it's a big brain. The percentage size of the brain is very big in all primates, even little monkeys. And it gives primates, the, the big brains give primates the ability to be very smart. And all primates live in societies. They live in groups. And there's a group of monkeys or a group of apes. And those groups need the big brains to be able to communicate, figure out what everybody else in the group is doing. If you're a solitary creature that lives alone, you don't need to figure out what other folks are doing and how other folks feel. But if you're a monkey living in a group, you need to know if that monkey over there is mad or if he's happy. Because if he's mad, he might come and attack you and you need to be able to figure that out. So all primates develop very large brains to be able to communicate and figure out things with the group. You see that among all primates. And primates have the biggest brains of all compared to body size. Yes? Uh, so are gorillas, are gorillas are very smart, yeah. So big people There's a are movie. Smart. Whoa. Turn, if you turn that thing to the right. Yeah. There's a movie called Gorillas in the Mist. If you ever want to go rent it or see it, it's really good. It's about uh, a woman who went and lived with gorillas and could, t could tell you how. Was it Jane Goodall? Jane, uh, no, it wasn't Jane Goodall. It was a uh, different lady. Jane Goodall did it with chimps. Uh, what, what was that movie? This oh, Diane Fossey. Her name was Diane Fossey, Grandma. What was that movie? Uh, was a big Mighty Joe Young. Gorillas in the uh, Mighty Joe Young. That's right. Yeah. Sorry. That's that movie. Mexican. 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 Very funny video. Go back to that one. <laughs> Here we go. Primate characteristics. Is that hard? Isn't that mouse thing, bro? No. I'm really good at it. No primate, that's fine. Alright. Quiet, please. <laughs> Which is just one order of placental mammals. <laughs> The distinguishing characteristics of a primate include opposable toes or thumbs and eyes directed forward, as seen in this lemur of Madagascar. Many primates, such as this New World monkey, are adapted to living in the trees. The gibbon illustrates the flexible shoulder and hip joints important for climbing and branch swinging. This chimpanzee illustrates that primate hands and feet are mobile and have nails rather than claws. But the most distinctive feature of a primate is the size of the brain relative to its body size, allowing for highly developed social interactions. So we have all those features, all those primate features. You want to see a primate stupid video? Yes. Yeah. 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 I'd much rather be a monkey than a human. That would be awesome. Hey, throw oh, I think monkey was doing it. Hey! What are you staring at? Never seen a repair gorilla before? Actually, I'm a primate, just like you. We got a lot in common. Look at the old opposable thumb. I got it, you got it. Makes it possible for us to work with tools. Now what I do with my monkey wrench? Oh, oh like I said, us primates got lots of things in common. Like the ball and socket shoulder joint. Great eyesight, too. 
We depend on it a lot. We got our eyes right here, facing forward, so we can see in 3D. Comes in handy, don't it? Hey, want to race to the top of the pole? Okay. Oh, sorry, I forgot. You humans aren't as well adapted for climbing. <laughs> Beats me how you ever made it to the top of the evolutionary ladder. <laughs> because this is the AP bio and, and they use a different book and some different terms. But the Strepsorines, if you look on 455, Strepsorines are the oldest types of primates. Very similar to the ones that evolved shortly after the dinosaurs went extinct. You see they're called lemurs and ii's and lorises and galagos. And these things are mostly nocturnal, which we think the, the earliest mammals were, because that would have been the best way to hide from the dinosaurs, just only come out at night. Dinos. They're yes. located in Africa and Madagascar, which makes us think that uh, the primate evolution started in Africa, because that's where all these things are found. And I have some pictures of these things. Here's a ring-tailed lemur here, and there's a tarsier. Actually, oh wait, Tarsiers aren't even in this group. Let me show you a lemur video. What? Is that a ring-tailed lemur? <laughs> Watch the lemurs. <laughs> lemurs. They hunk. They hunk. They leave. Boing. Then yell at cats. But they're related to humans. Why is she like. These are lemurs. Their name means ghost in Latin. And because many of them are active at night, they seem quite spooky. But they have some traits in common with people. Many lemurs have front paws that look like hands, with four fingers and a thumb. Lemurs live in family groups where the children get lots of love and attention. So that's the oldest group. Lemurs are the oldest. Lemurs are the oldest group. And then after the lemurs came the monkeys. Now again, since there weren't, listen, since there weren't dinosaurs around to eat the primates, the primates could get bigger. They didn't have to hide from anything. So we see all groups of mammals get bigger after the dinosaurs go extinct. And the next bigger group of primates were the monkeys. And uh, there are different groups of monkeys. We have the old world monkeys. Old world monkeys are found in, uh, in, in, in Africa, in Asia, and the new world monkeys are found in South America. So we think that these things spread out of Africa into South America. Now at first you think, wait a second, Africa and South America are huge, they're separated by a lot of space. But Pangaea breaking up, these things were once a lot closer together. And we think that uh, some of them, there must have been some land connection still when these things spread across. But there's different types of monkeys. There's, uh, there's lots of different types. There's baboons, there's capuchins, mm -hmm. 
Um, there's uh, this Dexter on um, the museum thing. Yeah, that was, that was white Dexter, uh, yeah, that was one of these. That was uh, one of these. Uh, Capuchin monkeys. My favorite movie. A lot of people Dunkston. use these as pets. Why are you My favorite movie, Dunkston Check Sam. With the. It's got a monkey. It's got an ape. It's got an ape. Yeah. Fun. Ape. Orangutan. 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 Orangutan's an ape, and we'll talk about those in a minute. Oh, uh, there you go. Huh? Dunkston yeah. checks in. Let's yeah. see some monkeys. That's the best movie yeah. Yeah. I love that movie. What? what? Now this doesn't have any audio, but this is a group of monkeys. This lady studying them. This is from the Discovery Channel. In this group of monkeys, all the babies are gold colored. Why? And they're not they're not reared by one parent. They're reared by the entire group. And so the the gold color of the babies helps the rest of the group know which ones are the babies and and tell them from the adults. You can see them very easily. And so she's working with this group, and I, I don't know what happened to the audio here, but you can see they share the babies and take care of them. Why are they golden? This, that's not a monkey, that's the lady that's studying them. No, really? Yeah, I didn't know if y'all realized. Now, monkeys eat leaves and some fruit, but mostly leaves. And they have a big, the appendix on us is actually real big in the monkeys, and it's used for digesting the leaves. Um, and s most monkeys have a have a total leaf diet, and they just see, so they just leaf, eat leaves all day. Whoops. Now the next group that came along, listen. The next group that came along were apes. Now the apes, there's only about five or six types of apes left on the planet. The rest have gone extinct. But they are the orangutan, the gibbon, those are the Asian apes, and there's another that's not on here called the siamang, and there's actually a couple types of siamangs. But anyway, the orangutans and the gibbons are the Asian apes. And the chimpanzees and the gorillas are the African apes. And these are even bigger. And they have changed, the apes changed from the monkeys in that they changed their diet. Instead of eating leaves all the time, they eat uh, fruit and meat and not very much leaves. So uh, these things will actually kill, you know, little animals, rodents and things running around and eat them. They eat a lot of fruit. They love to eat fruit, and they eat hardly any leaves, the apes do. And they're bigger. The gorillas spend most of their time on the ground. The chimpanzees spend about half their time in the trees. And the uh, orangutans and gibbons spend a lot of time on the ground, too. So apes have kind of moved from the trees to spend more time on the ground. They can still climb trees, but you almost never see a male gorilla up in a tree because they're just too heavy, they'll break the branches. Some of the male gorillas weigh up to 800 pounds, wow. and they're about they're about as strong as they can do a tug of war with about six or seven adult male humans. They're that strong. Which ones eat termites? Um, None of them. Those are uh, those are the chimpanzees. Uh, chimps. Well, any of them will eat termites if they get a hold of them. But I think the ones you're thinking of are um, prosimians. Ant eaters. Yeah. That eat termites. What the heck is that? That's a baboon, which is a monkey. As strange as it may seem, this large mandrel, which is a member of the baboon family, and this tiny marmoset are both monkeys. The marmoset is the smallest member of the monkey family, weighing less than one pound. The mandrel, on the other hand, is the largest member of the baboon family. And baboons are among the largest monkeys in the world. This is how big mandrels are compared to people. It may be tempting to group baboons with apes, such as gorillas and chimpanzees, since they are so similar in size. But don't be fooled by size. Baboons are monkeys. And while monkeys and apes are both members of the primate order, monkeys have many features which are quite different from apes. Apes don't have tails, 
and monkeys do, although some monkeys, like the mandrels, have very short tails. Apes, like this gibbon, can swing through trees by brachiae, while monkeys, like this marmoset, cannot and must travel through the trees by climbing and leaping. Can we get given? Yeah, can we get back to that one more time? The, uh, Just the given. Yeah, it's right there. I got it. No, no, no. And monkeys. Go, 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 go. Although some monkeys, like the mandrels, oh, have very yeah. short tails. Apes, yeah. like yeah, this the given, right. can swing through trees oh. by breaking it. While monkeys, like this marmoset, cannot. And must. I want to be that, that ape. That's so scary. Scary. He's got accurate. He's like a yeah, ninja. Yeah. Gorillas! And translated into English, the word gorilla means hairy person. And gorillas are very hairy. Long black hair covers most of their bodies. When you see a gorilla in a zoo, you'll notice that they look a lot like hairy people. They have two arms, two legs, and hands and feet a lot like ours. But gorillas are much bigger than we are. Adult males may grow up to six feet tall and weigh over 500 pounds. That's three times the size of an average full-grown man. Adult female gorillas usually weigh 200 to 300 pounds. And gorillas are much stronger than we are. An adult male is as strong as seven men. And even a three-year-old gorilla is stronger than you or me. This is how gorillas are compared to people. Although gorillas have arms and legs that look a lot like people's arms and legs, they walk much differently. They walk on all fours because their arms are much longer than their legs. It's hard for you and me to walk on all fours because our legs are so long. Watch a gorilla as he walks. See how he curls his fingers to walk on his knuckles? Because of this, gorillas are called knuckle walkers. Gorillas walk flat on their feet. But look at those feet. They look a lot like our hands. That makes it easier for them to climb trees. Just think what a great climber you would be if you had four hands. But usually just the females and youngsters climb. Adult males are too heavy to spend a lot of time in the trees. But they will run up a tree. What's the, uh, what's the like, average lifespan of a tree? I don't know how long they live. That's a good question. Oh, okay. So! Yes. When it showed like how big the gorilla is compared to humans, it looked like it only wanted to like the waist and a full grown adult. But like the gorillas look a lot bigger. Like they look like they're bigger. They're not as tall as you would stand, probably most of them. But they're they're real wide and thick. Yeah. They're really strong. Real strong. Like a short. Okay. So listen. This is basically how it works. Listen. Stop touching me. Oh. We have an evolutionary tree. The earliest primates were the uh, were the strepsirines, which include the lemurs and the other ones that were listed on the other page, but gal galagos and uh, uh, things that you find on Madagascar. Um, these are the nocturnal organisms, only come out at night, and smaller climbing trees. They don't make facial expressions and such. And then we find branching off of those, and by the way, these continue. We still have these today. Branching off the strepsirines are the monkeys. And we still have them today. And the monkeys are a little bit bigger than the lemurs. And the monkeys swing around in the tree, or, or climb around in the trees. They, they hop around. They all have tails. The monkeys all have tails. The monkeys eat leaves. Um, and then branching off the monkeys, 
You have the apes, and we still have them today, so they're still going. The apes are bigger than the monkeys. They eat fruits and meat instead of leaves, and the apes don't have any tails. Oh. They have foots. Okay. They have foot. Oh, yeah. Yes. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let's vestigials. Gosh, Meredith, why do you have to do such stupid things? It's like scared of big hippo. Indeed. Oh, cute one. Who remembers Who the dollars? No, who remembers the dollars? Who remembers the the two guys that now this is a yeah, 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 yeah. this is a uh, early primate. An early primate called Purgatorius, an early primate fossil. Let's watch this. More than one hundred million years, dinosaurs ruled planet Earth, exploiting habitats in every corner of the globe. Five million years ago, that long rain would come to an end. Going through the atmosphere, an asteroid six miles wide struck the Earth with the force of 100 million megatons. In the wake of this cosmic collision, the planet appeared lifeless. But insects, plants, and some small mammals would survive and repopulate the landscape. This is Purgatorius, one of Earth's oldest primates. It was an arboreal animal, climbing trees to forage for fruit and insects. Modern primates may have evolved from creatures like this one. Branches off, and we call them Australopithecines. 
Now I'm going to throw some big words at you you haven't ran into before. So get ready for that. And you're going to have to know them, unfortunately. Australopithecus is a development that is extinct now. But it was an ape. And everything about it suggests it was an ape. It's the brain size of an ape. Looked just like an ape. But it walked on two legs. It was an upright walking ape. And you may have heard of this, these Australopithecines because they were famous. The first discovery of one, they called it Lucy. Have yeah, you ever heard of Lucy before? Song about it. Lucy, it was named after the song Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds by the Beatles because they found this skeleton and they brought it back to their camp and started looking at it. And when they were brushing it off and looking at it, that song was playing on the, on the radio. And, or somebody had a tape of it or something. I don't think they had radio out there in the middle of the African desert. But anyway, um, they were listening to it, and, and they found out that it was a female, and it was an upright walking ape. They could tell by the way its knees were shaped, and I'll go over this with you Monday, how they knew it was upright, walked upright. But one way you can tell by the way the knees were shaped, that it walks upright. Because things that walk upright have knees that are locked, and things that don't have knees that don't lock. If you ever watch the, the monkeys and chips, they, they, even when they walk on two legs, their, their knees are bent. And so it had different knees and it had different hips, and they realized very quickly that this was a special find, and, uh, and they became famous for it. And the guy that found it, his name is Donald Johansson, I'll show him to you Monday, he's very famous. And, and, uh, and so that find is very famous, and you still hear about Lucy today. But Lucy was an Australopithecus. Can everybody say that with me on three? One, two, three. Australopithecus. And it was actually had a species name, Australopithecus afarensis, was Lucy. Australopithecus afarensis. Now, it's not a human. We are homo sapiens. But it was a step in the line to the evolution of humans. One difference between humans and apes is apes walk on all fours, knuckle walkers, and humans walk upright. So that was a progression, you see. We're progressing toward us. And this took about, this, this division here took place about 8 million years ago. And we see the first Australopithecus shortly after 8 million years ago. Have we seen any more? Oh yeah, they found lots of these, hundreds of them. I'll show that to y'all on Monday. Peace out, Willis out. Y'all have a great weekend.